Hi folks, I uh, hope everybody's okay. This is Jason. It's good to be with you uh, tonight. <clears throat> We're going to have a bit of a Bible study. I've sent some uh, invitations out to people. And maybe one or two might come on later on. You never know. But I'm going to just do a little uh, Bible study uh, on the book of Esther. And I uh, hope this is a blessing uh, to people. It's good to be with you. I'm just going to talk about what's been happening over the few weeks, uh, over the week, and um, I hope that uh, you're going to be blessed uh, by what's being uh, shared. So let's pray. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you for this day. Uh, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. And Father, whatever's said, whatever's done on this uh, video tonight, uh, Father, that you are blessed for your glory. That, Father, you would use it for your glory, that it would be a blessing, that it would be an encouragement and a help to people, and that people might uh, know your love and might know your grace and care. So, Lord, we come to you today that you would bless, that you would encourage us, and that we would know your love uh, today in Jesus' name. And be in this video, Lord. May it be a blessing. May your preservation and protection be upon it. And Father, may it be a blessing to many people in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, it's good to be with you. And uh, I'm just going to see what's uh, going on um, on YouTube land. Um, see if there's any uh, things going on. And uh, we can kind of... Um, see what's happening if you like to turn to the book of Esther and uh, you'll find book of Esther um, is what we're going to be looking at and so we're having a Bible study in the book of Esther so I just had a look at the magic sandwich show there's nothing going on there And now just have a look at the Bible for the Winglet show. And there's nothing going on there. So there's nothing much going. We'll just Just um, see. Uh, t -t 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 yeah, so so yeah, we'll we'll leave it there. And uh, we'll get <clears throat> to the Bible study. So if you'd like to turn to Esther chapter 4, the book of Esther uh, chapter 4. And uh, reading chapter 4. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes and went out into the midst of the city, and cried with a loud and bitter cry, and came even before the king's gate, for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, there was great mourning among the Jews, and fasting, and weeping, and wailing, and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told it her, then was given the queen exceedingly grieved, and she said, raiment to clothe Mordecai and to take away his cloth, sackcloth from him but he received it not then called Esther for Hatak of the king's uh, chamber Lynn. 
whom he had appointed to attend upon her, and gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. So Hattach went forth to Mordecai into the street of the city, which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him of all that happened unto him, and of the sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasuries for the Jews to destroy them. Also he gave him uh, the copy of the writing of the decree that was given at Sushan to destroy them, to show it unto Esther, and to declare it unto her, and to charge her that she should go in unto the king to make supplication unto him, and to make requests before him for her people. And Hattach came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. Again Esther spoke unto Hattach and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. And all the king's servants and the people of the king's province do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king into the inner court, who is not called, there is one law of his to put him to death, except such as to come, whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter, that they may live. But I have not been called to come in unto the king these thirty days. And they told to Mordecai as the words, then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether hold, holdest thy peace at this time, then shall their enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place, but thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther bade them return Mordecai's answer, Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way, and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. So, we're looking at the book of Esther, and we're looking at the doctrine of the providence of God. Now, there was a, a missionary um, in the 1700s in America called David Brainerd. And David Brainerd uh, was at college, and he was uh, going out with Jonathan Edwards, the great American philosopher's daughter. And uh, anyhow, while he was at college, he... he um, criticized some of the people, some of the lecturers, that they weren't as godly or on fire for God as they should. And he got kicked out of the college, and it was a tremendous setback, yet God undertook for him in that setback. God undertook for him, because he became a great missionary. Uh, and today you might have a setback. You might feel that your life has had setbacks, but you need to know that all things work together for good for them that love God. A key text that you can take home with you today uh, in deliberation and thinking and meditation is verse 14. Uh, verse 16. Go gather to all the Jews that are present in session and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maiden will fast likewise, so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law, and if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went in his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. So what we're going to see now, we're going to get an overview of the book of Esther. The book of Esther is about 10, 10 um, people, uh, 10 chapters. So I'm going to give you a brief overview of the book. In chapter 1, we have Vashti, the queen, who is asked by the king to come out and show off her body to his guests at a banquet. She won't do that, so he gets angry with her, and she loses the job of being queen. And then in chapter 2, um, the king's looking for virgins, and he, he finds Esther is the one for her. Then in um, Esther chapter 3, verse 1, we see the rise of Haman, a general. After these things, the king Azorus promote Haman, the son of Amaditha, the Agagite, and advanced him 
and set his seat above all the princes that were with him. So he begins to advance this general, and he hates Mordecai, who in chapter 3, verse 5, will not bow to Haman, this great general. But this great general has a plot to kill the Jews, and he gets the king to agree to it. In chapter 4, verse 1, Mordecai is upset. So we read in chapter 4, verse 1, when Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes, went out into the midst of the city and cried with a loud and bitter cry. Mordecai was upset because the king had agreed to the plot of killing many, many Jews. Now Mordecai begged Esther, who is a relative of Esther. Mordecai is a relative, like an uncle or a cousin. And he begs Esther to sort the situation out, to go and see the king. Meanwhile, Mordecai has foiled a plot to kill the king. This is important. In chapter 5, uh, King Haman goes to the king. Uh, the um, Haman goes to see the king. And the king says to him, look, I remember this guy. I remember... Uh, so somebody I need to honor, who, how would you do it? So Haman thinks, well, it's him. He, he's going to be honored by the king. So he said, I would ride in the uh, in the city and honor this man. And so the king says, well, go and do that to Mordecai. So this enemy of Mordecai ha is humiliated now by having to glorify Mordecai. Meanwhile, Haman, Haman has had gallows built for Mordecai. Uh, this is in by chapter 6. Eventually, uh, th this old story of the exaltation of uh, Mordecai is right about chapter 6. Anyhow, Mordecai asks uh, ask Esther, look, go and see the king now. If she goes and sees the king without permission, she's likely to get killed because... Unless he held out his golden scepter, he would not uh, say he, 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 he would kill you uh, if you came to see him. So she could possibly get killed for this. But anyhow, she goes, gets the people of God to pray. She goes and sees the king. Uh, the king says, what's, what's up? She tells him at a banquet that Haman has plotted to kill the Jewish people. The king is angry at this. And he has Haman hanged on the gallows that Haman prepared for Mordecai. And the people of God are protected and vindicated. In that story, we see a people on the back foot, a people in real, real difficulty, and yet God really undertook for them. He really, really kept them safe. It says in the Word of God, all things work together for good to them that love God and he he kept them safe he 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 he, he was amazing he, he he turned it around for them in that very difficult season in, in their lives now I want to uh, look at four points uh, through this now and that is Esther and her courage Esther and her home Esther and her people, and then Esther and her God. So first of all, Esther and her courage. If you turn to uh, Esther chapter 4, verse 11, we read these words. And the king's servants and the people of the king's province do know that whosoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king into the inner courts who is not called there is one law of his to put him to death except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter that he may live but I have not been called to come in unto the king these 30 days so he's feeling tremendous um, she's feeling tremendous danger she knows if she goes to see the king she could be killed if he doesn't hold that golden scepter out, she's finished. 
but she goes and does it in the end. She goes and talks to him. She goes and asks his permission. She's bold. She's courageous for her God. She's bold and courageous for her God. I want to say to you today, no matter what you're going through, no matter what difficulties and challenges you're going through today, you need to be bold for your God. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 it says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of sound mind. God has given us a spirit of love and of sound mind. Not a spirit of fear, not a spirit of backing off, but a spirit of courage to go forward. You said, yeah, but my life's falling apart. There are things happening in my life and, you know, I don't know how to cope. Yeah, but have courage. Have courage to go forward. You turn to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. Verse 6, be strong and of good courage for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swore unto their fathers to give them. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. And verse 9, have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whatsoever thou goest. God is with you. If you turn to Deuteronomy 31.6, Deuteronomy uh, 31.6, Deuteronomy uh, 31.6, Deuteronomy uh, 31 6 it says be strong and of good courage fear not nor be afraid of them for the Lord thy God he is that doth, do, doth go, go with thee and he will not fail thee nor forsake thee be strong and of good courage fear not nor be afraid of them for the Lord thy God he it is that doth go with thee he will not fail thee nor forsake thee then if you turn to Proverbs chapter 3, 25, Proverbs chapter 3, Proverbs chapter 3, Proverbs chapter 3, 25. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence, and shall keep thy foot from being taken. So be courageous today. Don't back down. Don't back off. You know, you might be a mother or a father trying to bring up your children in the ammunition of the Lord. You're having problems and you're fearing to back off, not to bring the word of God into that situation. No, go forward. You might be at a school, a college, a university, and you're being intimidated to keep quiet and not share your faith. No, don't back off. Be bold. Be strong for Jesus. You know, you might be an evangelist. And, and you're being asked not to go out as much as you should do. No, be bold for Jesus. You might be a pastor who has been called to preach, but your congregation doesn't want the meat of the word. They want you to give children addresses and not preach the word. No, you can't back down. You've got to be courageous. Luke 22, 39. Luke 22, 39. Luke 22, 39. Luke 22. 39. And he came out and went as he was wont to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. And when he was at the place, he said, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast, and kneeled down and prayed, saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. The Lord was in the garden of Gethsemane. The pressure was heating up and the blood was coming even down his brow. 
But did he quit? Did he give in? Or did he not go forward? He went forward. He went forward. And the heat might be on in your marriage. The heat might be on as a father or a mother. The heat might be on as a pastor or a preacher. The heat might be on in your work situation, in your relationship, in your ministry, in your service in the church. The heat might be on, but press on, press on, press on. I love it in Philippians chapter 1. I just love Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1, verse 28, Philippians chapter 1, verse 28, in nothing terrified by your adversaries, which is to them an evident token of perdition, but to you of salvation and that of God. Paul did not back down. Paul was in prison. Paul was was in prison but did he back down did he give up paul had people who were going around as detractors pulling his name down pulling him down and trying to promote themselves did paul give up no paul was indefatigable paul was uh unbeatable he he just kept going he kept going he kept going he kept going you've got to keep going be bold be bold be bold keep going keep going keep going for jesus Oh, will you not do that for your Lord who died for you? Your Lord who gave his life for you? Did he not shed his blood for you? Did he not did he not have a crown of thorns on his head? Did he not was he not nailed to a cross? Can you not serve him? Keep serving him? Oh, you might be criticized, you might be rejected, you might be on the side. People might might not be there as as you hope, but my friend, Jesus loved you, gave himself for you. Now will you not give your life for him and serve him? Be bold, be strong, be courageous. Number two, Esther and her home. We've looked at Esther and her courage, and now we look at Esther and her home. And if you turn to Esther chapter 4, verse 12 and 14. And they told Mordecai Esther's words. Uh, then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house, more than all the Jews. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther, Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape the king's house more than all the Jews. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall the enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this. For such a time as this. Esther knew that she was in that palace for a reason for such a time as this. And if you know where God's put you, it doesn't matter what the difficulties are. It doesn't matter what the problems are. If you know that God has put you there, then God will undertake for you, my friend. He will undertake for you. Where God has put you there, God will bless you. You might find it difficult. You might find it a hard place. There might be crises in your life and you're wondering where is God in all this? But if you know where God has put you, then you can cope with those crises because that's where God's put you. So ask yourself, is this where God wants me? And if this is where God wants you, then God will undertake for you and fight your battles. Esther and her courage, Esther and her home, and then thirdly, Esther and her people. If you look at Esther chapter 4 verse 16, Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me. And neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. Esther loved her people. Esther asked the people of God to pray. She was going to go and risk her life for the people of God. Chapter 5, verse 2. And it was so when the king saw Esther, queen, standing in the court that she obtained favor in his sight. And the king held out to Esther the golden scepter that was in his hand. So Esther drew near and touched the top of the scepter. 
chapter 8, verse 3. And Esther spoke yet again before the king, and fell down at his feet, and besought him with tears, and put away the mischief of Haman the Agite, and his device that he had devised against the Jews. She risked her life for the people of God. The people of God were important for her. The people of God were valuable to her. And I ask you a question. Are the people of God valuable to you? Do you rally round God's cause? Do you rally round the gospel? Do you rally round people who are proclaiming the gospel? Or is it all about you? Is it all about what God can do for you? All about what the people of God can do for you? Or do you just roll up your sleeves and get stuck in to the kingdom, serving and get amongst God's people and support the people of God in the proclamation of the word? So many people are me, me, me. Oh, you've got to meet my needs. You've got to be there for me. You've got to do this for me. Why don't you just serve, rally around God's people and be there for God's people? 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. One Thessalonians chapter three, uh, verse six and seven. Notice the love of God's people here. Uh, One Thessalonians chapter three, verse six. But now, when Timothy came from you, uh, sorry, from now, but now when Timothy came from you unto us and brought us good tidings of your faith and charity, and that you have good remembrance of us always, desiring greatly to see us as we also to see you. Notice the love for each other. Paul and his companions for the Thessalonians, the Thessalonians, how they love Paul and his companions. Verse 7, Therefore, brethren, we were comforted over you in all your affliction and distress by your faith. So there was this mutual encouragement in chapter 10, uh, chapter 3, verse 10, Night and day, praying exceedingly that we might see your face and might perfect that which is lacking in your faith that Paul was praying for these people chapter 4 verse 9 chapter 4 verse 9 but as touching brotherly love you need not that I write unto you for you yourselves are taught of God to love one another and indeed you do towards all the brethren which are in all Macedonia but we beseech you brethren that you increase more and more there's a love there's a love here for people there's a love for them the, the, the churches and, and God's people. And then chapter 5, verse 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient towards all men. And we think of, you know, so in the 1 Thessalonians, we see God's people rallying around each other, supporting each other in the proclamation of the gospel. And I want to ask you today, are you really consumed about yourself or are you consumed about rallying around God's people, being there with God's people in the battle for the faith? If you read uh, the book of Ruth, you will find uh, Ruth standing by Naomi. Naomi lost a, a husband, her two sons, and they are on their own. She's on her own. But Ruth, one of the wives of her sons, says, I'll go where you go. Now, Naomi's life felt bitter, but Ruth standing by her gave her comfort. Later on, Ruth married Boaz, and, 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 had, and they had a child, and Naomi was comforted. But it all was down to Ruth standing by Naomi. Oh, my friends, how wonderful it is to have a brother or a sister in Christ who will stand by you. How wonderful it is if you're a, a person who can be dependable in friendship, a person who can be dependable in ministry, where you stand with the people of God faithfully. Will you do that? Esther stud with the people of God. So we've looked at three things so far. Number one, the knee, uh, Esther and her courage. Number two, Esther and her home. And number three, Esther and her people. And now number four, Esther and her God. In verse 16 of chapter 4 in the book of Esther, our key verse, let us read those verses again. 
Go gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me. And neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maiden will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther had commanded him. She believed in prayer. She believed in the power of prayer. She believed that God could change the situation. Sometimes you've been praying and praying and nothing seems to happen, but you need to realize that God does answer prayer. If you turn to Luke chapter 11, Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11 and for starting from verse 2. Luke chapter 11, starting from verse 2. It says, And he said unto them, When you pray, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend, and shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey is come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not, the door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father will he give him a stone or if he ask a fish will he be be, be a fit for a fish give him a, a serpent or if he shall ask an egg will he offer him a scorpion if you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more shall your heavenly father give the holy spirit to them that ask him God answers prayer. He answers prayer. God's a good God and he, he he knows what you need. He knows what your cries are and and he heard the cry of Esther. He heard the cry of the people of God. He heard them and he delivered them and God hears your cry. He hears you. He hears the pain. He hears the he hears the hurt. He he hears the struggle. And you might wonder, well, God, where are you in this? Have you really answered my prayer? But even an answer that doesn't seem to be an answer is an answer because God shuts doors and he opens doors. And he only wants to do you good, my friend. So we've come to the end. We've looked at four points. And then if you read Hebrews chapter 1, verse 2, it talks about Jesus has created everything. And I want to say to you today that you might have experienced setbacks in your life, maybe tremendous pain, a divorce, or you lost your job, or you've been backbitten, and, or you made a terrible mistake, or, or something, a, a, a terrific tragedy in your life. And it was a tremendous setback, and you, you just, you're just wondering you'll never really get over it. You'll never really get over that damage or that problem, really that your enemies got the better of you. Well, it says in the word of God, all things work together for good to them that love God. And God turned it around for Esther. It seemed impossible for her and her people. They looked as if they were down and out, but God took out the enemies. God took out Haman. God took out the enemies that tried to kill the Jews. God vindicated Mordecai, was with Mordecai because Mordecai's heart was an undivided heart for the glory of God. 
and if you have an undivided heart for the glory of God, if you are sincere and live for God, if your heart is pure and good and living for the glory of God, then you can be sure that God will undertake for you, that God will turn it around, that God will make all things new. Even if you've failed, even if you've made mistakes, even if you've walked in sin, even if you're struggling with sin, if you come to God and cry out to God, he will make a way for you. He will make a way. We have a great God. We have a mighty God. We have a wonderful God. We have a glorious God. And he is making a way for you today. He's making a way for you in your family. He's making a way for you in your business. He's making a way in your relationship. He's making a way for you in service. He's making a way for you. And he will not let you down. He will not forsake you. He will turn everything around for you, just as he did for Esther and Mordecai and the people of God at that time. So don't be disheartened. Don't be discouraged. Go on with the Lord and remember the book of Esther today. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the tremendous book of Esther, that tremendous book that shows your greatness your name is not mentioned yet your hand is at work in every page you are the great i am you are the great god of elijah you are the great god of abraham and isaac and jacob you are the mighty god you are the mighty savior you are the mighty lord the mighty king you are our god today you deserve praise and glory there is no god like you such is your greatness such is your majesty such is your glory, such is your wonder, such is your power. There is no God like you. You are our God today. And so, Father, we give you the praise, we give you the glory today. That you go before us today, you save souls today, you undertake for us today. You are our mighty God, you are our mighty Savior, you are our mighty Lord. And I praise you today. I worship you, Lord. And I pray for my friends today who have heard the word today. However they're feeling today, however discouraged today, may they be strengthened in their faith. May they have a boldness for the gospel. May they realize where you have called them. May they know that the place that they're in, they are called by you to be there. Father, may, may they rally around God's people. And Father, may they go in prayer. May they seek you in prayer. May they know that they can ask you in prayer. And you are the God who will answer prayer. You are the God that will answer prayer. You are the God that will make a way. You are the God that loves. You are the God that guides. So bless them, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name and for your glory, Lord. We praise your name and we give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, God is good. And um, I hope you've enjoyed the Bible study. Uh, that was preached at the Haywood Reform Fellowship today, on Sunday afternoon. Uh, and don't forget, if you want to come to the fellowship, uh, contact me. You can uh, text me and ask for details where, where we meet uh, on the north side of Manchester. And uh, there's a Bible study on a Thursday in the evening, and there is a uh, a sermon on the afternoon on a Sunday and you're welcome to come don't forget to check out my website which you can see uh, here uh, which is jasonburnspreacher.com 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 check it out may God bless you in it uh, there's Twitter thousands of videos on Twitter that you can look at some of mine most of them are by many many other scholars and, and, and people so check out my Twitter Check out my Facebook. There's good material of preaching on there and my other YouTube channel. And hopefully next week we should be uploading some open-air ministry videos that you'll be able to see what we do. So check those things out. It's good to be with you to, tonight. And um, don't forget my, my website, jasonburnspreacher.com, 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 jasonburnspreacher.com. Don't forget, jasonburnspreacher.com, jasonburnspreacher.com, jasonburnspreacher.com. Okay, so what is there to talk about now? Well, again, I've said on the other video, 
uh, uh, on my other YouTube channel. Um, well, today was a good day. I went to a church uh, and listened to a, a black uh, charismatic pastor today, and he he spoke on uh, blessed are the poor in spirit, and he was saying when we feel poor in spirit and empty that God fills us, God refreshes us, God renews us. God can lead us into the wilderness, but bless us and encourage us. And God can do that for you. God can bless you. God can be there for you in your wilderness experience. I found that tremendously encouraging, to say the least. And then we had an afternoon meeting here. There was a, a handful of people. Um, It's tremendous though the, the presence of God is so real and we're in the word of God and it's such a blessing such an encouragement to be in the word of God I've been out nearly every day this week I preached about 20 hours uh, in preaching time uh, like I said I was on Norwegian TV the other day uh, this camera and uh, and um, cameraman and news reporter was recording me uh, asking me about the uh, Manchester United manager, and it was quite funny what I said. I said the Port could do a better job. Um, we've had a few people who who were quite nearly violent. What someone tried to hit or, or swing for, um, like a bodyguard for me who was protecting me while I was preaching on the step ladders, and we had a couple of other instica examples of two great big um, Polish guys coming down intimidating me they were drunk they were just having a laugh but it was quite intimidating and then later on on a Saturday evening we had about 20 youths around me so if you can get down to uh, Manchester and if you want to come and help me you know we've got a good team of people but we need more people to come down and help uh, and support the work so if you feel it ready and you feel you can contribute come down and it, you, you know you'd be a great blessing to us and a great encouragement we need your support we need your help but we I talked to a couple of Muslim girls on Saturday and uh, they were really interested in the gospel then a Muslim young guy I talked to a, a, an atheist who was really uh, from Ireland really nice guy and uh, we had a good chat shared him, the gospel with him uh, many people come to the table to literature many Christians were encouraged by what we were doing so you know God was blessing and many people were uh, showed an interest to wanting to come to the meeting so we pray that God will draw people and that th this church plant will grow if it is if it is indeed to be a church plant but, you know we can't make it happen so pray that you uh, that the Lord would bless it that the work would go forward uh, and and that the work would be built up uh, for your glory, for the glory of the Lord. Um, nothing else to report, really, apart from I've mentioned it before. I'm studying the Westminster Confession. I'm uh, reading um, the Westminster Confession, going through lectures by John Gresner on Legion and Ministries on the Westminster Confession of Faith. I'm finding that tremendous. Been listening to Ronald Nash on the lectures of philosophy, uh, which has been really good. I've been studying the pre Socratics. Um, my Greek's not doing too good. I've not been into Greek, but I'll be getting back into Greek again uh, pretty soon because I think we're going to be starting up again uh, studies in Greek, so that'll be good. Um, nothing else to report, really. Um, just that getting out doing the evangelism and God's at work and God's blessing and you know God's good so let us pray father we thank you for your goodness we thank you for your love we thank you for your blessings and we give you the prayers and the glory and the honor father we thank you that you are our God we thank you that you're our Savior and father I just pray for all those that are going to listen to this video today that you are blessed for your glory and for your honor in Jesus name amen amen I just want to say a shout out to Bible thumping wing nuts uh, channel go down there and uh, some really good videos by Matt slick recently and I was enjoying listening to him debate a couple of atheists recently and uh, really encouraging 
and uh, yeah so it was good have a look at the one minute apologist he's got some really good videos down there and if you go on my twitter feed you can find loads of stuff by him and there's also a lot of stuff by veritas i don't agree with everything in the veritas videos uh, but uh, there's a lot of videos there on my twitter that you can look at and really be blessed don't forget my website jasonburnspreacher.com 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 so going to love and leave you may god bless you may god keep you may you have a lovely day and thank you for coming tonight and it's been a pleasure to be with you and god bless you in all that you do in jesus name amen